Welcome! My name is Amanda, and I'm one of the children's librarians from the Thomas Crane Public Library in Quincy, Massachusetts. This video is part of our DIY children's program resources. For more program resources, as well as ebooks, streaming movies, TV, music, and much more, please visit thomascranelibrary.org. Today, we're going to do some color chromatography. Now, don't be intimidated by the word chromatography. It's a fancy word for separating out a mixture of things. Scientists can do chromatography in lots of different ways, but we don't need fancy machines or chemicals to try out a simple version ourselves. What can we separate? Marker ink. All we need for this activity is coffee filters. White will show the colors best, but any sort will do. Washable markers, a cup or other container with a little bit of water in it, and a pencil, and some tape. Let's get everything together. And let's get started. You can see I have all my materials together now. We have our coffee filters, which I've then cut into some strips. Kids, you may want your parents to help you with this. I have a glass of water, only about half an inch of water in the bottom. You don't want too much. And then I have a whole bunch of markers. I have lots of different colors to choose from, and I even have one extra black pen. And you'll see why in just a moment. First, we're going to start with blue and red. Take one strip of your coffee filter, and you're going to draw a line just about an inch from the bottom. You don't want it at the very bottom because you don't want the marker to actually touch the water in the glass. This is why you don't need too much water in there. If the marker actually touches the water in the glass instead of just the paper touching it, the, all of the ink will wash out into the water and you won't get to see the chromatography happen. I've drawn a line of red exactly over the line of blue, so they're in the same place. It sort of looks black, but they'll separate in the water. Now take your tape and tape your piece of paper onto your pencil so that the end of the paper is going to just touch in the water. Then take your pencil and lay it across the top of your glass so that the paper hangs down and the bottom of it just touches the water. What will happen now is that the water will get soaked up onto the paper and as it soaks up, the water will start to carry the ink from the marker with it. As you can see, the water has hit the ink and is starting to go. Because we're using washable markers, the ink will dissolve in the water and be carried along as the water moves up the paper. Already, you can start to see the red ink from the marker and the blue starting to separate. Now, this wouldn't happen exactly this way if we used purple because purple ink from a marker is made in a different way than we normally would make purple paint by mixing red paint and blue together. You can see the ink starting to separate out. This takes some time though, so let's try a different one while we're waiting. Now you can see why I'm using black. I have two different black markers. One is a felt tip pen and one is a black magic marker. Both of these are water soluble, which means water will wash them away, but they're made by two different companies using two very different types of ink. We're going to use our black pen to suspend our black ink test strip over the water. Once again, you're going to use your tape and fold your paper over your pen and tape it down so that it will stay in place. 
If you're careful and don't let them touch, you can use the same glass of water for two strips. Now, let's see what happens when the water starts to hit that black ink. Do you think they'll look the same? Or will they be different? Look at the water starting to hit that ink. They definitely look different now, but how different will they be in the end? The magic marker seems to be much darker. And look, it even has a little bit of color in it, whereas the pen just still looks gray. Now again, this is going to take a little bit of time, so we'll let these sit and come back to them in just a moment. Here we can see some of these tests that we already did that have had time to really soak up a lot of water. You can see on this one, the blue ink and the red ink are still a little bit mixed together, but they've separated out quite a bit. If we were to let this one keep soaking, eventually the red would end up being near the bottom, in the middle, and the blue would be carried all the way up to the top. Companies that make marker ink use different pigments to do it. These are different chemicals that show up as different colors. Those pigments are going to land in different places. The black ink that we tried, you can definitely see a difference now. The felt tip pen stayed gray and just faded as it soaked up onto the paper. Whereas the washable marker separated into a brown and a green. One of the reasons why it was carried up so far is because the washable marker is made to be washable. It was made to dissolve in water, so it's easier for the water to carry it. Whereas the felt tip pen was made to be something we could wash, but probably not something that was meant to be washed out quite so easily. Now this took time, but let's see it sped up a little bit. Try testing different inks you may have in your house. Different markers and different brands will behave very differently when you test them this way. See what you can do, and then use them as bookmarks when you let them dry. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.